One in five suffer. Erase the stigma. Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Monday with Marla and Dave. Welcome back to Mental Health Monday. Yes. Part two, episode two with Brandy. Yes, yes. Last week we started a great conversation and we're continuing that conversation uh, man, and we, we, we focus a little bit more on uh, life and, and how to deal with stresses and anxiety uh, uh, and how to focus on mental wellness. This week, we're going to actually slide that into how music plays a big part in that. What? Uh, and yes. so we're going to dive into her latest project, uh, B7. B7. Uh, and it takes us on a, a deeper journey into her personal struggles with uh, sweeping life changes and challenges. So, mm-hmm. uh, man, I, I can't wait for this discussion. Oh, my God. I'm nervous. <laughs> and Marla we, and, would just and get I'm, off of live. I'm going to be on live so for a minute I, so, so we can, can answer some live questions from you. <laughs> and that's what we're going to do. We'll be right back. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. All right, we're back. All right, Brand. So uh, let's talk. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The applause <laughs> is real. Uh, <laughs> Uh, let's talk about uh, uh, some of the new things going on uh, with you as far as your music is concerned. Other yes. than the fact that uh, B7 uh, is on your own label, brand yes. new now. Yes, Shout out it to is. brand new. I'm so happy about the creative freedom that I have now. And I'm, f- mm. of course, partnered with E1, who respects my creativity yeah. and who has just really put everything that they can behind this project. And I'm so proud of it. So. But what what in your mind separates B7 from uh, the rest of your uh, discography? Uh, what separates this album from my previous work is um, is my involvement. Um, I felt like I needed to really dig deep mm-hmm. and you know pull from my own lyrics, my own poetry, and my own life story, mm-hmm. and 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 just and use my music as a way to just just tell my story and I felt like if I couldn't tell my own story in my own words you know sonically the way I wanted things to sound yeah. then there's no reason for me to really continue to do no. music was that like a cathartic or a, a, a self-healing kind of thing to Absolutely. just kind of let it pour out of you and to really just allow that to be the basis of your of your creativity for this project absolutely and i was surrounded by the late great Lashawn daniels mm-hmm. and you know shout out to dj camper just a great team of people who encouraged me to and nurtured me to mm. really uh use this process uh, use my music as, as a way to heal and music has that kind of power where it can get into the crevices where you thought you was good but mm-hmm. you know that music starts flowing and it's like oh i i, I yeah. didn't really I didn't really heal from that. I really needed to just go ahead on and talk about it. And it's 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 funny when you when you're honest and when you confess and when you can just give your all in 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 your craft. Mm-hmm. It just something has happened to me. Like I'm I've I feel like I've I'm I've changed. That's so awesome. so how hard is it? My, I have a question just as a layman musically. You and mm-hmm. Dave are on another plane. Yeah. <laughs> but how hard is it for you to have a departure from musical expectations? And to me this project it it was so true in every way. I feel like that it didn't meet any expectation or format, but it was just there mean. was a raw truth to it that it was you didn't disappoint for sure Thank with you. vocals ever. Thank you. Thank you. But just the content, and I was like, wow, she just really just went for and and including what I saw visually with the video. You know what? It it Maya Angelou said that you, one of the the hardest things, the greatest agony, is to 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 bear an untold story. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I needed my music to help me through 
you know, some of the times where I felt like love was unavailable to me, where I felt like my sanity was questioned. Um, just the, the, the feelings and the emotions that I, that I could feel if, I, if, I'm, if I'm feeling somebody too deep or I, I, I love too hard or, you know, a lot of those things I, I felt like would make not only, you know, powerful, you know, love songs, but it would just make, it, it would make me own up to, you know, some of the things that I had I had gone through and things that I had to overcome and get through and get over. And um, it, it, it really helped. And I'm still a work in progress. I mean, I'm not. Aren't we all? Know, I think this is a forever thing, you know, where you have to, you know, just try to strive to, to be better. But, you know, to be able to share within my music, within my craft, it just gives my music more purpose. Mm -hmm. It gives it more meaning for me. And now it's not just about, you know, me getting out there and being super famous right. it's and not popular. A hit. It's not, it, right. it's not like that. It's it's, a, From it's really about me being a vessel and mm -hmm. and and relating and and pulling people to my own essence and sharing in their their essence as well. So Go I ahead. was going to say uh, in the last show we were talking about uh, uh, the stresses and some of the pressures that. Uh, a lot of people might not be aware of that it just come with stardom to begin with. Yeah. And especially when you have the persona, the public persona over here, mm -hmm. but then you have the real home person that's over here that's been the same from yeah. day one. Yeah. Um, and the difference in the expectations on those particular uh, individuals, even though they both reside in you. Mm -hmm. um, did some of the things that you had learned over your previous journey to mental wellness mm -hmm. uh, help you have the courage to be able to speak from the heart on this project that you were so involved with in the writing and the production of it as well? Absolutely. Just being able to just own a lot of the things that I have, um, I've had to I've had to go through like I I have a song on my album called Bi Bipolar. I have mm -hmm. a song called Borderline and mm -hmm. you know all of these you know mental challenges that I felt like I was dealing with without being diagnosed without mm -hmm. without really knowing just yeah. just not recognizing myself yeah. in in, in certain questioning myself yeah. my behavior my nature like how can I be in a situation where my my it seems like my my, I turn against my own nature. Like my nature is love. Like mm -hmm. how can I? You I'm know, not my, recognizing my, myself. Yeah, I'm not right recognizing now, right myself. Yeah. I'm looking in the mirror. Like who am I? You know, mm -hmm. and and those kind of experiences, you know, just to be able to sing about them, it, it just felt like I was just, I was confessing. Yeah. I was releasing mm -hmm. and 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 just getting all of that out. You know, it just yeah. it it just made me feel a lot better. Yeah. And um and then also just a, a, a way for me to forgive myself and to forgive a lot of the things that I that I'm not proud of you mm -hmm. know um and on top of then taking better care of my 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 mental my mental state you know I think that that is what I'm I'm most proud of is that I'm now aware that I need this is a this is something that I need to continue to work on and work through and make sure that I'm always you know trying to do my best and, and my stability staying conscious yeah staying conscious staying and that aware. awareness yeah <laughs> and I don't I don't have the vocabulary no, that you guys do because I, I'm still learning you know I'm still learning about this you know yeah. I'm learning a lot through you guys and just learning just period but just you know this is what I want to be a mental health advocate I want to do this you know this is something that I want to I love it I love it so I guess for me um, just as family and friends mm -hmm. um, speak to right quick before we have to go to the break Speak to how uh, sports and staying in shape and, and getting oh, yeah. your exercise, how that impacts you and your uh, a mental state throughout the day. Um, I was telling you this today. You know, I love sports. I love tennis. I love, you know, that you guys introduced me to, to, to pickleball. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's one of the best meditations ever. I think when you can stay present and stay in the moment and, yeah. and you know, not get so anxious, you know, when you're calm, you make your best shots. You know, when you <laughs> when you chill out, you might end up hitting the winner down the line, you know. I, so I'm sorry, it's, Drew. It's a great, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm, I'm still learning my she, she shots, was, but she was calm. <laughs> Very calm. <laughs> but yes, it, sports keeps, when you can master that, it's, it's something. Well, I know that in this project, I'm gonna when we come back, I'm gonna talk talk about something that I know brings you the ultimate joy. Okay. You'll hear <laughs> it when we get back. Stay tuned. When Dave and Marla get together. Yeah. 
You may not realize it, but these words, often used to describe someone with a mental health condition, can be very harmful. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental health condition, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. Just because someone's struggle isn't obvious on the outside doesn't mean they aren't hurting on the inside. We need to see the person, not the condition. Join with me, pledge to be stigma free. It's time for the Mental Health Minute with Marla and Dave. The WHO estimates there are currently over 46 million people worldwide living with dementia. That number is expected to rise over 131 million by 2050. Mm. Wow. The worldwide cost of dementia are estimated at 818 billion U.S. dollars. The causes of dementia can vary depending on the types of brain changes that may be taking place. Types of dementias include a Lewy body dementia, frontotemporal uh, disorders, and vascular dementia. It is uh, common for people to have mixed dementia as well, a combination of two or more types of dementia. For example, some people may have uh, both Alzheimer's disease and vascular dementia. Dementia is a general term for a decline in mental ability severe enough to interfere with daily life. Many people use the terms Alzheimer's disease and dementia interchangeably. Alzheimer's is a specific disease and dementia is not. Early signs of dementia are memory loss, uh, difficulty planning or solving problems, difficulty doing familiar tasks. Uh, being confused about time or place, and challenges understanding visual information, problems speaking or writing, misplacing things, poor judgment or decision making. If you or someone that you know are suffering with any of these signs, please, we ask again, seek medical help. This message is brought to you by NAMI San Fernando Valley and Loving, Loving Beyond, Beyond Reason. Reason. never do anything without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically wear my personality on my scene. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. firecracker. We're back with Bran. Brandy. <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> so, I said I'm going to bring up something about this project that I know is going to bring a smile to your face. Sarah. That is right. The prize. She's got the golden ticket. We, we definitely recognize yes. some names in there in the yes. credits. Okay, so <laughs> your baby, can your sing. precious, yes, my your only sweetie, baby. Yes. yes, my and, angel, and yes. And by the way, you know I do read mm -hmm. up on, especially even though you are our friend and we're we're blessed to have you in the studio as a guest. Um, everything that I have heard and seen and read credits your journey of bringing you back out of dark places to the light oh yeah all about sarah it's all about her i would not be alive i feel today mm. if it were not for her i i just there there have been times where i just was like you know what this is this, this is, is not for me struggle. this is not like I, I don't come from here you know this type this type mm -hmm. of thing like I, I like i've been that low and she has been the been the the angel that has always brought me back to my center and i mean i just i'm so blessed to have her in my life i don't know what i would do without she's her she's a sweetheart Absolutely. she is she's really she really is she's she's, she's, she's an am she has an am she's an amazing young woman she yeah. has an incredible thank spirit you. but she always has thank you very much i love her so much well what was it like her. working with her in the studio that's the point so so, so tell us what, wait first tell hold on <laughs> tell tell us tell, tell everybody because i here's here's why i'm saying it in this way i heard the album the project multiple times and i pull up in her driveway and she goes and i go man who she goes that's raw and i i got i was like wait what yeah because yeah. So she, the song is the song is called High, High Heels, Heels, and it's you know it's 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 a song about not being shallow and working on yourself, and I, I absolutely love the song. Um, and she just did such a great job just being in the studio with her. Like she she had been in the studio before. Like she, you know, I invested in 
in, in getting her a studio and, I, and I'm not allowed, you know, like she wants to find it her own way. So I haven't really just really, really worked right. with her the way You I haven't branded did. her. <laughs> and I won't ever do that. She, she, she did not brand the like, Syrah. She's like, Mom, I, I'm Syrah. I want to find it my own way. And so I totally res respect that. But doing the, the High Heels song, you know, I got a chance to work with her. And she's just so fast in the studio. She's so gifted. She knows how to stack her voice. She knows how to, she just knows how to blend. She, she just, just knows has what she, she has it. And I'm just so, I'm blown away by her. And I, it's just so magical that we both have a musical connection that we can share together for the rest of our lives. Now, had you, did this come out of the blue or did you recognize this? Ages ago, even before oh, wow. she was, not it ages ago. I mean, but did you did you feel <laughs> like you were like, come on, I, this is what I want you to do, or you were just gonna stand back and let her choose for herself? Actually, I, I've I've never pushed her to mm -hmm. to, you know, take on music as you know a career that she. But right. she's gonna end up doing it anyway because you know. I want her to have a normal. I've wanted her to have a normal childhood, childhood mm -hmm. right? And I wanted to her to have you know, self, self love, self respect, and in in all of that without anybody's opinions on her life. That's why you don't. I've never exploited my daughter out there. She's never Facts. been really mm -hmm. out there. But yeah. you know, music is God given for her, and so I support her in that way. But I'm all about divine time, and I think that she. She she has some time before she gets out there and right. really and really does it. But I wanted to feature her on the <laughs> album. That's why Baby Mama was I, the Baby Mama right, was right, about right. her, my love for her, and I wanted her to you know be a part of the album just so she could feel like you know I wouldn't be doing this if it were well, not for, for you. you. That's yeah, amazing. No, That's an it. awesome yeah. tribute. I was gonna say uh, with with you mentioned Borderline and Bye Bye Polar. Yeah. Uh, was there any song um, that? you realize came from a deeper place that was more difficult for you to actually emote and kind of bring out? For me, it was by bipolar for mm -hmm. me because, um, you know, that was a, that song came to me, you know, in a time where I was questioning, like I said before, my sanity and, you know, who, who am I, you know, mm -hmm. love doesn't make a person do this, mm -hmm. you know, am, am I okay? Should I go get checked? You know, and then you, you hear little whispers of, you know, when you're in a hard time, you know, people that claim to be your friends, mm -hmm. they'll start calling you, you know, they'll call you bipolar just to make you feel bad, not mm -hmm. to, not to give you any help. Like, it's like, if you thought I was, or if Dave, mm -hmm. it's like, let's, let's, let's call Nami. Let's get you some, let's, right. let's get you some help. Right. It's it got you to healing. Yeah. It wasn't like that. So I heard whispers, you know, in that time frame, you know, when I was when I wasn't myself and I just I just kept hearing, you know, and she's bipolar and this and I, I just I'm gonna write a song about it. Mm -hmm. Right. And basically, I was just saying bye to bipolar because I'm like, that's not my nature. That's not who I am. That may be something that I need to go in and, and handle and, and manage. But who I am is unconditional love. Right. And I want right. to, and that's, and that's, so it was, that's, so sort of that's a message. my first time ever even admitting that, right? you know, to you guys, because you're family and I can say that to you guys, but right. I was really saying bye to, you know. What In other words, even if, even if that is for, for those that actually deal with that as a, as an issue, yeah. going even there. if that is a diagnosis, yeah. it doesn't define as who you are. Right. And, and that's so what I, I can, have to. I can separate from yeah. that. And I want to, mm -hmm. and I want to reiterate, I'm, I'm going to be just, I'm, I'm your hype person today. That is so essential to o opening a portal to receiving love, which is where healing starts for everybody. You don't wear, it, you don't l lasso someone with what is what you consider to be a label. Mm -hmm. Because we don't walk around and say, mm -hmm, okay, breast cancer. We don't no. do it. So what I'm saying to you is w the mental state is so complex Mm -hmm. And so unique and so different. We have to really wake up, and I really want this to be a segue to remind everybody to wake up to that consciousness. More with Brandy when we come back. We'll be right back. Yeah. All right, last week, it's, uh, well, it's time for the poll question break. Uh, as you hear that lovely piano playing in the background, you know that fun music means it's poll time. Last week, we told you that uh, 58,936 people in Los Angeles County 
experienced homelessness last year. That was a 12% increase from the previous year. The question was, what percentage of homeless adults staying in shelters live with serious mental illness? Your options were A, 17%, uh, B, 26%, or C, 34%. Brandy, what's your guess? 34. 34? Well, uh, thank goodness it's a little bit lower. Uh, 26% I said 34 too. Uh, of, yeah, of uh, homeless adults staying in shelters <laughs> uh, currently live with serious mental illness. Marla, what's the poll question for uh, this the week? The poll question this week is most Americans lack access to adequate, adequate mental health treatment. In the U.S. alone, how many people, how many adults rather, with mental illness report that they cannot get treatment even after trying and exhausting all their options? A, 3 million, B, 6 million, or C, 9 million. Jump on uh, our social media, Love and Beyond Reason and NAMI San Fernando Valley. And take the poll question. It's fun. It'll keep you coming back. You learn more every time you join us. Yes. We'll be right back. Vote. <laughs> okay. Uh, the conversation has always been fun. Did you uh, notice that Brandy echoed our... She's I whispering. Did I, I did love, not. I love all the, the, the <laughs> Marla, the change. She, she, likes, the, she likes all the, the color colors. pieces. Yes, I love it. I love it. So and you were saying? No, I was just. I was. I was. I was ending with really just a a plea because the more that we can expose, number one, the fragility that we all feel to be different in the way of brain differences mm -hmm. each one of us is unique it's almost yes. like a fingerprint none of us has the same but mm -hmm. it's the one thing that i used to say this when my son was going through his greatest suffering would you put if 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 somebody said hey you, my son has diabetes would you lock would you send him to jail no. he's never been violent he didn't cre he didn't create he didn't commit a crime but yet and still we want to put all of our differences in prison mm -hmm. that's a problem so yeah. what I'm hoping to do is, with the help of Brandy and her voice and Dave and all those who are joining us in this fight, to be able to expose and bring about a, a, a erasing of all of the, of the silent, break the silence, number one, and erase mm -hmm. the stigma. Because that will encourage people to come forward. And Brandy, B7 is very instrumental in that. Thank you. It's a healing album. I think everybody should 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 stream it everywhere. And music streams. Get it. it. Yes, it, it it will it will help you heal. Like it, it's one of those ones. So, I am so thankful that we had this moment. I want to come back. You you well listen. And, I um, you already know. Well, let me just tell you, we're not done. We're almost done. But but there's invites coming for you. We oh, we've decided that you know one of the things don't have me writing no speeches. She's now. looking at me. I'm not don't sure what she's talking about. I'm, so I'm, like I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely going to be. We're definitely going to be inviting Brand to come back and be part of our telethon. Oh, for sure. We'd love that. And so to have her with her, she's going to have her own block where fans mm -hmm. can call and they pledge, and we're going to raise money for the Nami Walk. I would love that. Um, so we we're going to schedule you in. Done deal. I and, would love that. And 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 go ahead, Dave. Well, I was going to say, of uh, getting back to music and performing uh, and artistry and creativity, uh, we saw you on the uh, uh, Billboard Awards. You amazing did an amazing job. Thank you very much. Uh, and I know as a performer, sometimes, you know, I, I prefer to actually be in the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, and just in a in a creative mode that way, and then because of because of what I do, uh, performing live is just part of it. So, right. but if I had my preference, I'd stay in the dungeon, so oh, to speak, too. just creating. So I was wondering if there's a distinction for you that you feel um, uh, one is something that's easier and part of who you are, and one is something is more of a little work. Well, honestly, I, I love the studio because studio is where, you know, freedom. You, it's, it's freedom. It's mm -hmm. you don't have to be perfect. And usually you find your you find your best stuff was yeah. when you're messing up. And, you know, yeah. you can yeah. you can just be free in the studio. But the stage, it does give me a different feeling. It does give me a different freedom. And mm -hmm. especially when I've had my rehearsal right. time and I've you know, put the time in to, right. to give a great performance. But, you know, I deal with a lot of stage fright. Mm. And I have to face that every time I go on stage. And the fact that I can face it, I'm, I'm really proud of That's myself. That's huge, because I I, I'm telling it. you, yeah. even people don't realize. Like, like fear at, at 
levels you wouldn't even imagine when I have to perform. And well, now, how, how long have you been dealing with that level I've been, of... I've been dealing with that since I was 16 years old. There, There's a story to it, but I don't know if we have time. But well, we do if you want to. You can touch on it. Yeah. Well, I, just just quick, um, I, I was, you know, this radio station was doing, you know, tapes of... Um, like skits mm -hmm. on me and another artist, and and it, it it and it looked as though I was like always the you know the stuck up, stuck yeah, up, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm just totally not that right. way. Period. And I went to their summer jam to give them you know a, a, a plaque of mine just to thank them for their support, even mm -hmm. though they were dogging me every other. <laughs> they were still I, playing I, the music. I was still yeah. playing the music. They were dogging me. <laughs> but the you know sick to be 16 years old and to walk right. out and 20,000 people starts to boo you. That's that that traumatized me for life. That and has by the left way, stain. I'm glad mm. that she said that because I was going to ask you earlier what would be one of your incidents of post traumatic stress. People that don't realize that's PTSD. That traumatized me for like I still have it to this wow. day. Wow. Like I, I like my my prayers are like is they're like deep deep prayers before I wow. go on stage. Yeah. Wow. Well, and so, so and the the be the reason why that's a great. A story and an anecdote because uh, when you when we see you on television performing, we would never understand exactly. that that's what you were feeling in the moment. Oh my God, it's yeah. pretty impressive. So that is uh, to funnel that. Thank you. But y'all so knew that though. Yeah, well, I, I kind of no, so I kind of told you no, guys we, that. Like, we behind, know yeah. as friends, but what yeah. I'm saying is, even when I heard it for the first time as a friend, mm -hmm. I'm like, wait, what? What do because, you mean? Right? Exactly. <laughs> because that it, it, you have such a command when you commit. So here's a question. Here's a question for you, as far as that is concerned. Uh, does it reinforce positive feelings the more that you go out and people receive you positively? I, I think you know, of course. Like after the Billboard performance, like I felt, you know, I felt confident after that. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when I'd have another performance, the fear comes back. It Each starts time all over again. It. But uh, but but a little bit of it, I also feel. I would be nervous if I didn't get nervous. Mm. You know, I get nervous to the highest level, though. But mm -hmm. it's I think there's a, a humility that comes with that mm -hmm. because I feel like something is taking over me to express itself as me when mm -hmm. I go out on stage. Mm -hmm. And so when I look back at it, it's like that I didn't do that. I was being used, you know. Right, so right. but it yeah, it, it's affected me for life. I, it, it hasn't. As as long as I've been doing this, I still get super afraid mm. to perform, and I'm well, very very you know, shy on the low. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, I don't about. know that she smacked uh, Lexi in the arm. We, along with uh, millions of fans, uh, give you all the love and support that we can, and we appreciate the Thank music you. that you've given us through the years. Thank you. And we look forward to many years to come and Thank a lot of collabos and yes, hanging out and I making music. Thank you. I love you guys so much. I and, really do. And, and it's mutual. And listen, we are just getting started on the journey mm -hmm. of mental wellness and healing yeah. as a team. Yes. So join our team. Please. Absolutely. You know, we need volunteers. We need help. We need your support. So we'll get back to a and little bit of that. y'all need our support, too. <laughs> <laughs> we all got some issues. Right. That's right. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back. <laughs> yes. Bad. You're worthless. Don't trust them. They'll hurt you. You're worthless. It's pointless. When the pain of schizophrenia meets hope, everything can change. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. All right, uh, just to remind you that uh, Mental Health Mondays is brought to you by NAMI San Fernando Valley and Loving Beyond Reason. Uh, make sure, please, we ask you guys, we need your support. You know, of course, your donations are welcome at mm. either one, lovingbeyondreason.org, NAMI SFV, NAMI San Fernando Valley.org, uh, but even your time. Just reach out. We, we can do this thing. You're not alone. You're never alone. We want to say thank you to our guests for oh. the past couple of weeks. Brandy. Thank you, thank you guys. 
love you. Uh, she has new music out. It's wonderful. It's cathartic. It's healing. B7. Make sure that you uh, stream. stream it wherever you stream your music. And then help someone else stream yes. it as well. But right quick, Perfect Brand, gift. what's coming up that, that hasn't happened yet that we all should be watching for? Do you have a performance that we can? Um, I can't. I think okay. it's a surprise. All right. But but I got but, some stuff but, coming but up. Stay, uh, stay, <laughs> yeah. Focus on the some media. performance is coming up. Something's happening. Yeah. So just. <laughs> so until next time, we're Marla and Dave. Remember, your overall health has to include your, your mental, mental health. health. We love you. Make sure you vote. See you next Please week. Vote.